If I create a video because of your comment, I'll give you a shout out. So be sure to let me know in the comments what you'd like to see. All right, at this point, I'm ready to put my line sensor array on and start programming that. So I'm back with my trusty box robot, which I built in a previous video. Um, and again, uh, just to mention before I forget, uh, I will include a link to my blog article, which explains, it has all the code and explains this whole process if you uh, want to check that out. So I have my line sensor array, my robot, some mounting hardware, just some basic screws, screws and nuts. Uh, for tools, I have an X-Acto knife to cut a hole for mounting and for my wires to go through, a pair of pliers to hold the nut, and a screwdriver to screw the, uh, the screws in. All right, let's get started. All right, um, so now that's mounted. It's kind of off center, but you know it's not too bad. And we can always adjust that in the code. But as far as hookup, uh, what we need to do here is get these untangled. All right, so this is my five volt rail, which we know because I have a five volt regulator going into it. Um, so the black was ground and the white was positive. So I can hook that up. This was my LED on, which I just uh, which I just tie to a five volt signal, so that it's always on. And then the remaining are my sensors, which I will attach to analog pins. Uh, if I were using digital, I'd use digital pins, which are an analog pin can be a digital pin. Um, but in this case, the TNC's analog pins start on, at the fourth pin. So we have the first pin here, which is uh, positive, then we have two more pins, and then the ground, the analog pins start here. So I will just plug in here, and then I'll have all eight in a row. All right. Um, yeah, so that's it. That's all we had to do. And we're ready to start programming this. We're almost at the final step of our PID line following robot. I've got my boxed robot. It's got the circuit and everything built in here. Um, I've got my line sensor, which I just put on. And now I'm going to program it. I've got a little line here, but I'm only going to be doing the line sensing uh, program right now. I'm not gonna incorporate the motors. I like to split the things up into separate tasks. So I know that my motors work right now. I don't need to worry about those. And I know, um, I don't know, however, if my sensor works. So I'm only going to focus on the code for my sensor. So it keeps it very simple. Your code isn't mixed up with a whole bunch of other stuff. So here we go. First off, you're going to need the QTR sensor Arduino library. There is one available from Pololu on their GitHub account. However, if you're using the digital sensors, there is a slight glitch with their library. When you get readings from a white surface or a light surface, you'll actually, it'll bounce between zero and 1000. Um, and I found that the issue was, it was just a, a small typo in the library. I pretty sure I put in a pull request. It hasn't been uploaded yet, but anyway, so I would suggest that you go to the QTR sensors Arduino library on my account, which you can see here, gbrl one slash QTR sensors Arduino with hyphens in between each word. Uh, it's the exact same library as theirs. However, I've added the fix for the digital line sensor. If you're using the analog, then you can go ahead and use the Pololu, no problem. So what you'll do is you'll put that in there. I'm not going to show you how to add a library to Arduino. You should know how to do that by now. Um, 
But what I'm going to do is I'm just going to open up the example right from the QTR library. So I'll scroll all the way down. QTR sensors. And I'm using the analog and I want the calibrated version. So I'm going to open that up. And here we go. This is a whole bunch of information about how this works. Basically, you want to adjust the number of sensors. Right now it says six, I'm using eight. The number of samples per sensor, you can leave that as four. Um, it just, what it does is it averages the number of readings. So if you have four readings, it's gonna take four readings and then divide by four. So you get, in case you get one that's slightly higher or slightly lower, it'll give you more of a normalized reading. The emitter pin, I do not have an emitter pin attached. And you can actually save yourself 400 microseconds each time you read the read line. I know it doesn't sound like a whole lot, but it's 400 microseconds that you're wasting. You don't need to waste if you're not using an emitter pin. So you'd say QTR no emitter pin. Now it turned blue. Good. I got the right one. Okay. And then next we have the QTR sensors analog. This is where we're going to create the object. And we're creating an array right here with our pin values. Now I have the TNC 3.2. And I have pins A9 through 8 over, so down to A2. I don't recall which side was left and which was right, so I'm just going to go uh, A9, start at A9, and we'll just go down from there. All right, so there's my eight pins. Uh, num sensors, so this continues on the next line. Kind of makes it a little confusing if you're not used to this sort of thing. Uh, num sensors, we have up here eight. Num samples per sensor, four. And the emitter pin, which is QTR no emitter pin, so I can save that 400 microseconds. The rest of this should all be the same. And the only difference if you're using the digital is that this is going to say QTR sensors RC if you're using the digital version. Okay, all the code will be the same for the digital version as it is for the analog version. So just to walk through this briefly, what this is going to do is turn on the LED on the board to let me know that it's calibrating. Then for 400 loop iterations, it's going to calibrate. Now it says 10 seconds, that's on the Arduino. I'm not sure how long that actually equates to on the Teensy. Um, but it's going to call calibrate 400 times. And what that's going to do is take a reading from each sensor and take the lowest reading and the highest reading and make sure that it calibrates the sensors so that it knows how low the lowest value of each sensor is and how high the highest value of each sensor is. So if you have a sensor that's kind of faulty, uh, maybe they're not all reading the same, or if you have more ambient light on the outer sensors, this is going to kind of equalize all your sensors for you. Generally what I do is after I've calibrated it once, um, if I'm going to be continuing to use the same environment, then I will not calibrate it in the future. I'll just hard code those values and send them in. Okay, and then we turn the board pin off, or the board LED off, to indicate that the calibration portion is done. Uh, initialize a serial for the serial monitor. Uh, print out our calibrated minimum values and our calibrated maximum values. So this is going to tell you what each sensor red as its lowest value and its highest value. And then for the loop, pretty straightforward, it's going to get the line position by calling QTRA, that's our sensor object, dot read line, and then passing in sensor values. Okay, I'll explain this in a bit, but uh, we print the sensor values from zero to 1000, where zero means maximum reflectance and 1000 means minimum. So the higher the value, the darker the image. So we're going to get darker, we're going to get a higher number for the sensors that are seeing more of the tape. And this is just going to print out all the sensor values in a line and continue on. And also tell us our position. Okay, so the position is assuming this is, uh, we'll say that this is one through eight. So our position is going to be zero if it's underneath this sensor and 7,000 if it's underneath this sensor, 
and it's going to be anything in between that if it sees anywhere in between. So right in the middle between these two sensors, we're going to get a value of 3,500. So that is actually how we'd know we're right on the middle of the line. Uh, if we get a value of, say, uh, 2,000, we'll be under the third sensor. 3,000 will be under the fourth sensor. And it starts at zero, so it's a little confusing. But um, just know that whatever sensor it is, it's one it's one off from the, the value of the 1,000. So 7,000 represents the eighth sensor. 6,000 for the uh, seventh sensor, and so on and so forth. Okay, and again, I don't recall which way I hooked up my pins, so this might actually be sensor 8, but it, it all works the same. So if this was sensor 1 and this was sensor 8, this would be 0, and this would be 7,000, and this would be 3,500. Alright, so let's make sure my board, I've got my Teensy 3.2. Oh, I don't have it connected, so that'll help. All right, right there, teensy. And let's upload this. All right, now the thing with the teensy is it doesn't restart when you open up the serial monitor. Okay, so that wasn't long enough. Um, here's what I'll do. Because the teensy is so much faster than the Arduino, um, it would normally take the Arduino 25 milliseconds to call this, and it's taking the Teensy much, much, much less time because it's the Teensy is running at 96, 000, or 96 megahertz, whereas the Arduino runs at 16. So I will just make this, I mean, I don't know, let's, we'll go with 2,000. That's roughly about the right factor, I believe. So upload this. The Arduino... When you open up the serial monitor, it restarts the program. With Teensy, as you can see, it doesn't matter if I close this and reopen it, it clears out anything that was previously in there, but the program doesn't restart. So I'm going to bump this up just a little bit more, just to give us a little extra time. I'll upload that, and as soon as it says it's done uploading, I'll start moving it to calibrate it. There's really no exact science to how to calibrate these. Just make sure that each sensor sees dark and light as much as possible while this LED is lit. So now the LED is done. Uh, I won't see my... Oh, I did see my calibration values. Okay, so now you can see I have... Let me stop auto-scrolling here. These two sensors in the middle are lit up really high values because I'm seeing the sensor... I'm seeing the line in the middle. Okay, and our calibration values these aren't very good. I'm not sure what's going on here, but um, the lowest readings should be somewhere around 100 or less. So for whatever reason, these aren't getting very good readings, but that's the, that's the benefit of the calibration. So even though they're not getting good readings, and some of these readings, like this one's reading 800 at its lowest, and this one's reading 470 at its lowest, even 411 at, at its lowest, they're all going to be basically equal now because they've all been, they've all been calibrated. Okay, but as I move this, so now you can see that 1,000 value is changing. So now it's at the leftmost. So now I know that my pins are set up right. So the first pin does actually represent the first pin. The only problem now is I'm getting these three sensors all seeing 1,000, even though all three are probably not seeing the line. Um, and the, the reason, because the line isn't three sensors wide, so... It shouldn't have three sensors see it. And the reason why that's probably happening is because of my calibration. Uh, but the last thing I want to mention here is that you have your position, which was the last. Remember, we had eight sensors, and then it would print the position. So remember, the position is 3,500 if it's in the middle. It's zero if it's to the far left, and it's 7,000 if it's to the far right. So if I put this in the middle, we're getting 3,800. Move it a little to the right. 36, 37, 35. So it seems like the calibration values are really messing with this. Yeah, because even over here, we're still getting only 3,800. So these, i got to figure out what's going on with these calibration values. Now, the first thing I would check 
is I would check to see if my sensors are actually turning on. Now this is tricky because you need a camera that has no infrared filter so that you can see that. All right, luckily I have an older Mac which with photo booth, all right, photo booth, you can see the camera, the face cam. All right, so they are on. They look kind of dim though, just to be honest. Um, you know, it could just be that I'm using brown and this is a soft material, so it's, uh, it's just giving me some weird readings. So let me switch this out with a piece of paper. Let's see how this works. All right, and with Teensies, there's no reset button. So you either have to unplug it and plug it back in or upload it again. Uh, the nice thing is if you leave the serial monitor open and you unplug and then replug it back in, it'll pick up right at the beginning of the program. So what I'm gonna do is just unplug and then plug it back in. My LED turns on. I'm going to scan that over. It's a little easier if you do it this way. Yes. All right, let's see what we've got. There we go. That's much better. So now I'm getting, we can see my calibration values are down in the 150 range with 1023, the max being the highest values. Now let's see what our actual readings are looking like. Hmm, something's fishy about this, because I'm getting all sorts of messed up readings here. I don't know what those erroneous 1000 range values are. I'm still getting these erroneous 1000 values, which I haven't actually used an analog sensor in quite a while, so it might be that that library is messed up for the analog sensors as well. Yeah, I don't know what these thousands are. These Right, at this point, I'm going to stop. I'm going to look into the library and see if I can figure out what these, what these erroneous 1,000 values are. All right, so I'm back. Um, I looked through the library, and actually I found the issue. I'm not sure why it's an issue for this Teensy, and maybe it's not an issue for Arduino, uh, because I would think that they would have fixed this by now if it was an Arduino problem. Uh, many people would be complaining about it. But the issue, in case you're interested, was that here they were using unsigned int. For CalMin and CalMax. And so when I would get a reading that was below the minimum calibration value, I would actually get a negative value for the numerator here. And that would result in a value that rolled over. So I would get a positive 4 billion because it went from 0 to a negative because they're doing math with a signed and an unsigned variable. So by changing that uh, unsigned variable to a signed variable, I should now be able to see some better readings. All right, let's see. Upload. Okay, so if I put this under the middle, let's see right about there, it looks like. Yep, so I'm getting a 3500, 3600 position reading. And you can see, not only does it say it's under the middle sensor, but it says it's also kind of underneath the sensor, the fourth sensor too. So I'm actually not dead center. And that's probably because as we saw, the sensor wasn't quite in the middle of my robot. So now it's telling me that's pretty much dead center because I've got 1000 in the middle and about 200 over here, 300 over here. So it's a little bit you know, just uh, my hand causing a shadow is making a difference as well. But you can see we're getting much better readings. So we're, we're, we're zero on every other sensor. It's, it's absolutely positive that there is no line there. So you can see as I move this over, I can see, so I get very good readings. Okay, so now I am done with this portion. I have my line sensor program working and I have my motor program working. So now the next step I'm going to do is put those two things together and start uh, programming my PID. So 
So I hope you enjoyed this. Again, uh, I will put a link down to my blog article, which will include all of the source code and also include a little section on how to fix the library, what was wrong with it. So in case you want to investigate yourself or if you're having that same issue, you can go in there and change it. Hey everyone, thanks for watching. If you like this video and you want to see more like it, give me a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe.